Farming spiderweb with genetically modified silkworms is way easier than getting it from normal spiders. Here is the deal. Spider silk is a one-of-a-kind material because it's tougher than Kevlar and stronger than steel wire. At least stronger in tensile strength, meaning that when you load it up, spider silk can hold a bigger load than a steel wire. And also, given that it's six times tougher than Kevlar, we might be able to make the John Wick bulletproof suits from it. Basically all the different industries from aerospace to automotive to fashion would have so many use cases for it, but we just can't get enough of spider silk. Problem is, when spider is hungry, spider wants to eat. And if you would put a bunch of spiders together on a farm, some of them would magically disappear every night until you are left with one big fat spider. And I guess having a miniature pen for every single spider isn't worth it. So scientists went on a journey to discover how can we get enough spider silk if not from spiders. They apparently made a stop by the tobacco plant, genetically engineered some spider goats, and even tried to make the E. coli bacteria produce the sticky substance. But even though they finally got some good results in terms of chemical composition after genetically modifying the bacteria to produce big proteins, like the ones that make spider silk into spider silk, the silk still wasn't up to par. Reason being, we still don't properly understand how spiders spin the silk with their tiny little organs called spinnerets on their butt. So it's like having sheep wool but not knowing how to actually make the thread out of it. Which means that the resulting spider silk then doesn't have the desired strength and toughness properties. Then it turned out that silkworms have suspiciously similar weaving organs to those of the spiders. So the scientists figured out that if they would genetically modify silkworms to produce spider silk, they could simply out source the manufacturing process and not worry about how it actually got made. Something like when you buy knockoff clothes from the professional retailer on your vacation and don't worry about which sweatshop it came from. Another benefit of outsourcing the production to silkworms is that we already know how to harvest and process their silk. In fact, we know it to the tune of 177 million metric tons per year which is worth about 27.6 billion dollars. Now, Given the thousands of years of silkworm domestication, they became quite fragile and helpless creatures. The adult moths can't even fly anymore. And the larvae need a sterile environment, temperature of about 22 degrees Celsius, or basically room temperature, moderate humidity, and feeding about 4 to 6 times per day for about 20 to 33 days. They eat almost exclusively mulberry leaves, so the mulberry farming is also also a big one. Allegedly, you need about 140 kilograms of mulberry leaves to produce 1 kilogram of raw silk. The silk harvesting process is then fairly simple. You let the larvae create a cocoon, wait a few days, and then boil it to kill the larvae and soften the cocoon. Then you just pull the fiber out of it and reel it into a thread. But the genetical modification of the silkworms is much more laborious, as you apparently need the CRISPR cas nine technology and thousands of microneedles to deliver the spider genetical information into the silkworm eggs. And also, I don't think anybody has tried to scale it yet, so it will take some time before we have all the fancy spider silk things. The latest major breakthrough as of making this video was made towards the end of 2023, when a Chinese team of scientists was able to successfully modify the silkworms and then extract the silk. Basically, this video builds on that exact research. And from my perspective, it's a really interesting topic, but the overall attitude towards it seems pretty lukewarm to me. Like, you don't really read that much about it in the newspaper, although it would be an insane step forward. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.